Good morning and welcome to our Take 10. Today we're going to be talking about High Point Market, Spring Market that was held um, last week at High Point and kind of tell you what we saw was trending and report on some of the new launches and exciting things that will be coming your way in the next several months from High Point. With me today is my partner in design crime, Jackie. Hi Jackie, how Hi, are you? Everybody. I'm great. How are you? I hope everybody's doing great, having a great weekend. Yep. Almost. My <laughs> feet are finally back to normal. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. After walking the miles that, that we did at High Point. So let's just jump right in because we've got a lot to talk about in our in our webinar today. So You know, the, this market um, for us seemed to be just this giant color story and so we've sort of put together our trend report this time according to these colors. Some really strong emerging colors that we've seen in a bit but are coming on super strong. So this is uh, Toby Fairley's new line introduction for CR Lane, which was doesn't, uh, the photos really don't do it justice. It looks much more beautiful in person. But she chose this very uh, pastel robin's egg or, you know, it's almost a violet blue, pale or pale with violet. And we saw that throughout market. Absolutely. Are you doing, you moving slides or me? You are. I am. Go ahead. Have okay. Slide up. And, you know, every, every time uh, we go to market, there's always a dominant fabric that it seems like everybody has to have. And last year it was a chinoiserie by TiVo, last market. And um, I don't know who, who the mill is for this one, but this, this fabric really hit the ground running, both on uh, Miles Talbot, Kristen Drohan collection. Um, and it really sort of summed up the mood of market. It was all about blue, right, Deb? Absolutely. Blue, blue, and, blue. And there was some, even some takes on this at Jaipur Rugs with their new National Geographic um, nope. collection. They were doing zebras and animal prints, but in this indigo, um, cobalt, electric blue, whatever you want to call it, they, they were yeah. doing their sort of um, take on it also. Blue is definitely the new neutral. I mean, it's just absolutely everywhere. And there's mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what of our from, our, from our our tour group on the back. Oh, this a, yeah, this is a, one of our favorite stops that we had this market. Our good friend uh, Kristen Drohan exhibited for the first time um, at market. This was her just astoundingly beautiful bed. It was the hit of market um, again with that fabric on it, and she applied it so beautifully in this bed. Um, it really was just a stunner, and her whole booth was was blue and white. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, this is more of her, her product. Yeah, more of her product again, really, and also this the you know the blue and white story or the black and white um, story was also about piecing uh, patterns and color blocking together on furniture for sure. And the way that she did it, go back to that one for just one second. Um, you know, it's kind of the new age of color blocking. It's almost. Uh, more tailored, almost like a car would be, you know, I mean, it's got those stripes down the um, sloping arms showing movement and stuff. We really thought this was really fantastic, and this stuff was navy, like a very deep navy blue, but also a lot of velvet. You're going to see an absolute overwhelming amount of velvet in this presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next up is this, I loved this chair. I love uh, the detail on this It's a work chair. of art, isn't it? Oh. Was I mean, this guy's out of Evans, Georgia. Who would know? I think he may be British. I, I kind of read his uh, his bio, but didn't obviously remember. But look at the detailing on the foot of that chair. I know. And we saw a lot of that, didn't we, Deb? Yep. yep. And then looking and on the stretcher the bars balls, underneath. The little cross, the little buttons. But the lines of this thing are just phenomenal. And again, it's a mohair velvet. Uh -huh. And even the wood, look at the wood, is stained blue. So it's not a black stretcher, it's an actual blue stretcher. Right. And this, it also went into, um, not only into wall art, but this whole blue and white story in, um, this is from Coderas into their bedding. I think, is this um, Lily Alessandra? It is, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, it was a really sort of heavily nubbed linen with this deep, you know, what, what, I mean, I guess you can't really call it indigo. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I need to figure out what type of blue it is. It's, all, it's like a Greek, you know, Grecian, just gorgeous blue. But um, 
and then I'll go back one. And then um, Social Marin, beautiful giant, or natural, I'm sorry, natural curiosities. This is a triptych, all in blue and white. So you saw a lot of just plain blue and white art, yep. small art. Absolutely. And then here's some more Kristen with the, you know, the white Chesterfield really played against the navy blue wall. And she also mm -hmm. had some great original uh, wall art, uh, which we'll talk and about pops, later and where yeah. that's going. Pops of raspberry with this um, mm -hmm. seem to be sort of the dominant combination. And um, because it is such a simple sort of color story, a lot of texture, which we'll talk about later with the uh, poops. Yep. And then this is Oli. Again, great all different kinds of tones on, in the blues that we saw there, and then... And that one, know? wait, go back. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, and this, I'm this passing is, the trigger today. I know. Well, and this, this kind of shows how the range of blues changes, and I think this is an answer to, you know, Swedish design and Belgian design that we've had so far, uh, you know, so prominent in the last few years, and all of the grays. And, you know, this one is starting to get a little more ethereal. And even just with the clouds and then the cloud light fixture and everything that's going on in that room, it's this very pale, wispy, um, more weathered blue, mm -hmm. not necessarily. So blue in every tone imaginable. But, but not muddy in the undertones. No, no. No. Deb fell in love with this at oh, that point. You know, and, and, uh, you know, I'm necessarily not a Ralph Lauren fan. But um, loved this chair with these pieced um, rugs on it, which we'll talk more about. And then this, you know, again, I think we, the whole idea of this, the deconstructed chair and that whole Belgium revival is um, kind of passe, moved on from that. But um, I did this one almost some took denim wing back. And this one took it really, I thought, more to a really tailored like men's suit deconstruction like you know the insides of the of the suit and all the different layers in their display don't you think rather than that whole you know shaggy burlap um, you know the places where you sat were soft to touch and beautiful sort of worn fabrics right but this is one that I absolutely I'm ordering these chairs first of all they They're were gorgeous. exquisitely made um, mm -hmm. yeah, and it was velvet with um, the padding on it, the whole sort of, you know, inter, um, if you've done any Top sewing, stitch, you know, yeah. it's the whole, yeah, the, the pick stitch slash, um, it's actually an under padding stitch for um, interfacing and couture wear, but this was gorgeous. But then again, the blues here were taking on a little bit of a green, sort of a peacock right. teal. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, I, love, I love it too when we see a progression of a trend like that that you know has been sort of overkill with the burlap and everything but now they're they're taking it in a whole another direction and making it really high end and sophisticated with the really very high end velvet on there mm -hmm, and the beautiful yeah. chair frames yeah and the frame is beautiful and then this is Ambella home again again an, an example of uh, you know pairing that raspberry red with it and we love this window treatment that they had done. That was a motif that they had on their chairs as well, that mm -hmm. sort of etched out, um, you know, cornice or whatever. And more of that raspberry red and white. And notice um, the polished everywhere. surface and everything, if, if it's glass or lacquered, against that plushness of the velvet. So really nice uh, texture story there. Yeah, all about texture. And brass, 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 right? Oh my gosh. Everywhere. Yeah. So, and then here's two great chairs, again in velvets, but in the, you know, the reds and the corals, another, another story. And, you know, this Sam Bella Home Collection, just, they knocked it out of the park. It's only their second um, market with upholstered goods, and um, their uh, creative director came from Pearson. If you ever ordered Pearson, that was one of my favorite lines. Mm -hmm. And so you can really tell that experience and, and the quality that that line had, and then their guy that's making their tables and lighting now came from Global Views. And so you're going to see that influence now coming together in that line. So that was our uh, Ambella home on the cover of our, or the first slide. This is a secret slide. source, guys. This is definitely a secret source. And by the oh, way, yeah. look at the skirt on, and the, yeah. the scalloped skirt on that upholstery. Mm -hmm. like and putting a, putting a square um, trim on an, on a chair like that is so hard to do. You can't just put a square. 
you've got to basically apply it after it's upholstered, uh -huh. or it will never look square. You all know that, right, Deb? Yep. <laughs> you can't just plop it on there. And so that we had kudos for them, and they had these beautiful um, sort of demi loon settees with engineered graphics on the back that were actually um, woven into the fabric uh -huh. of the fairy blossom that was just stunning. So again, it was a jacquard that went, the, right, it was a tight back yeah. sofa, and it was a jacquard um, design that went the complete um, length of the sofa on the back. It was gorgeous, and then re, uh, reproduced in the cabinet, a uh, cabinet Yeah, chair. and I just predict that we are going to see that everywhere, engineered patterning, mm -hmm. you know, really taking full advantage of bespoke you know, capabilities for custom stuff like um, this, which is a jacquard print, and you know, probably more in the digital printing realm, but printing on pattern, or, or in this case, weaving on pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, some Wesley Hall and more Ambella Home in that corals and the pinks and um, interesting yeah. chair. Um, Still notice. with blue, but moving into those blush tones. And again, everything had a white or whitewash finish on it. Mm -hmm. um, or a color that. finish. Yep. Very vibrant. And a lot of these uh, companies are doing the Benjamin Moore color matching. You can get your frame in any Benjamin Moore color. Mm -hmm. So we this flipped is just, as we always yeah. did, right? Oh Over my gosh! Much. Yeah, this is <laughs> cr crazy amazing. And um, color again. If you love color, you gotta love Design Legacy. Well, and if you, you know, as we go through this, review back to this. If you come back and watch this later. Um, he hit a home run on every possible trend mark in this. He's mm -hmm. got burled wood, which we're going to talk about. He's got the jewel tones, the blush tones. He's got that pale lavender. Mm -hmm. He's got the light frames. I mean, uh, his sense of style and his ability to be in front of the trend curve has just astounded us in the last couple of years. Yeah. And so what we're seeing here happening is this sort of, you know, the hot pink and fuchsias, which were, there were a lot of them, but now getting into this violet-y, um, orchid -y color, you know, which is... Uh, right. Which, Total jewel tones. Yep. Jewel tones all the way. In his art, in his fabrics, everything. And this is actually Toby Fairley on one of her new um, chair and a half chaises for last, I guess, or day bed, was she calling it? But again, mm -hmm. that here's that violet coming up. This time it was um, paired with sort of a citrony lime color. And one thing that she did is she went out to Woodbridge Furniture and um, asked them to custom finish and paint and lacquer. Um, her case goods that worked with her new upholstery line. And so here she picked up that color off the pillow and it's in the um, uh, side table between the two. And this fabric that was on the shades is just this beautiful grayish violet muted tone. So I mean, it really works with those bold colors by pairing it with those grays. And a great way to sort of transition grays into a color and more la uh, you know, lavender right. rather than just the gray. Here it is again. More. Uh, Jewel tones, yeah. Decor 55, one of our favorite sources. Uh huh. Natural curiosities. Um, and then orange, pop who of the, orange and tangerine. That, uh, and who was the um, upholstery done by? Uh, Do you know? I can't remember. I know. I, I thought you'd know because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so this really was another one that I think was. Um, going to come on hugely strong. Um, it's all of the blush tones, which uh -huh. were everywhere. Everybody had it. Um, they, you know, I don't know who coined the term, but the new feminine um, is a trend that's really coming on strong, whether um, you know, it's taking these materials like a Natuzzi leather sofa and making it feminine. Um, it's, it, you know, you put that color on anything and all of a sudden it becomes a feminine thing. So it's sort of taking a masculine object applying this beautiful blush tone to it and you have almost an androgynous mm -hmm. piece of uh, furniture or art. I think it's really well displayed in the Tapestries Limited piece because it's a masculine sort of hunting dad, you know, picture in pink, in this blush pink. Right. And it becomes very sort of romanticized. 
and, and it also is all about the detailing when you get into this whole mm -hmm. new, um, romantic feminine trend. And I mean, I love the idea that instead of um, tufting the, you know, the way that they did the 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 right cushion in the halfway up with the with the button tuft was is it, so it's sort of half male, half female. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, and the same thing with the barrel chair with the little buttons going down yeah. the side. And then here's um, Toby's version and for CR Lane. It was gorgeous. It was lovely. The, the leather that she had in her collection was so stunning. It was so soft. It had a beautiful sheen to it. I mean, you just don't think of leather as being a romantic fabric or a romantic um, surface and she knocked it out of the park with this. Um, mm -hmm. It was a romantic shape, a feminine shape with that beautiful color and all of a sudden you know you've got a nice durable piece of furniture in your bedroom, right? Yeah. We all want that when we have kids. Throw all the junk at the bottom of the bed. So I really uh, loved it. I loved uh, the chair at the top as well. And her upholstered bed and then here's Suzanne Kessler for Hickory. She, she did it too. She's kind of known right. for doing the blushes though. But she took hers, I think, in a different direction, and she usually has more of a peachy blush. Mm -hmm. This, for her, is sort of um, avant-garde for her because it's almost a violet blush. Mm -hmm. I thought it was sort of a departure, and it's a little more tailored than um, she normally does, just yeah. with the, you know, the simplicity of it. I thought she did a really good job of, of uh, yeah, you and know, look changing at the silhouette of the leg where it meets the desk too. That this yeah, is and wonderful. Just the, the pieces are more simplified for mm -hmm. her, and I think it has a real modern tone. It's modernizing what she's already doing. Design legacy again. You know, the these are um, actually canvases that are digitally printed. They can do whatever you want. They can manipulate the size. This was stunning artwork. Uh, I mean, and by the way, if you're not familiar with Design Legacy, the price point on these is crazy. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. And you know, here we're mixing not only the very dark blues, but now we're bringing in, you know, some aquas, some. Uh, you know, olive green, yep. and then another thing that they had was this fantastic collection of acrylic poles, um, drapery rods, and finials that were really, really well priced. Mm -hmm. Very they didn't well. have a huge selection. I think there were five or six uh, different finials, but the pricing was fantastic yeah, on them. It really was. And I love the idea of hanging those tapestries on, um, you know, a beautiful acrylic pole because it's such a juxtaposition of styles. Mm -hmm. Because blue was so um, pro prevalent in all different shades, in this sort of mint or winter green, um, some people might call it the, uh, you know, a version of the Clinique green that we used to know from the 80s and 90s, was, was sort of the um, color scheme of the moment. Um, Tivo yeah, had I mean, it, it C.R. Lane. It was a, a pop, yeah, for yeah. sure. It was like candy. And Toby Fairley's new uh, screens, which were a giant hit. Yeah. Um, people loved them. And then in Global Views was even doing it, but it, it really was a grade version, so it was kind of like the extension of gray now moving into the green side. It was great. Look at the, the color on the wall was, was beautiful. The rug, everything about this was great. I love the way they mixed up the fabrics on the chair. Mm -hmm. the, um, wallpaper, everything about it, and again, that raspberry seems to be the accent color, whether you're going with, you know, navy blue, a bright blue, this more subdued, you know, robin's egg, greenish color, that seems to be the accent, and then white on everything. Yep. And here's that screen again this from Toby, and then her, her social Marin collection, but again, mixed with the navy walls and, and um, the navy ottoman in her collection. Yeah, and social Marin, she did a collection of, you know, artwork that really was, I think, a great move to plan it at the same time as you're debuting your first uh, <laughs> upholstery collection because, you know, it's great cross-marketing and it all went together and it really made a full room statement for her. So that's Toby's business mind, I think, at work. Yep, that, uh, definitely. Right. These are from John Richard, these Malachite uh, faux boxes then with the actual um, Malachite or whatever that rock is on there, but just uh -huh. absolutely beautiful. And this is Toby's um, sort of butter leather, again, that butter leather chair in that green this is color. 
this is one of my favorite silhouettes in the chairs. Yeah. It reminds me of a steamer chair. And then notice mm -hmm. that you've got the half brass on the arm here, which is her, I mean, her take. And then yeah, she went inset. into detail. Right. Yeah, how they inset it. And the back of the arm as well. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I should have put a picture in there of the back of it because it was really quite nice. It the was. Put together. So green. Then we so go going into, in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Then we move into more of the apple green. Um, you know, so really any shade of blue and green will fly, right? But this yeah. one, again, velvet. Velvet just showing that sheen off um, in more of an olive -y tone. We love these chairs. Oh. Um, they had some really great detailing in them, and Bella's known for their enormous sort of scale, and these are big. Uh, but this fabric we saw everywhere in marketing different colorways, and it had appliques, um, so it was three-dimensional. Um, pieces that were sewn on after. And then I was leaving and I said, Deb, there's a runner on there. And she's like, well, that's why I like the chair. I'm like, I didn't even see it. I was so uh, the, the, you know, blindsided by the detailing on the chair because uh, you know it's got the little mini wing and it's got that beautiful uh, seat and the beautiful frame and then that beautiful little brass, um, you even know which support. Structure here. And, and if you see, and the uh, there was a head and a uh, there was a Mr. and Mrs. Mm -hmm. chair at the head that were all green uh, velvet. You can see it here, and on the back of it they had um, silhouettes. So they had a male silhouette, like a uh, uh, and a female silhouette, and it, like a cameo Applique. almost. It was like mm -hmm. awesome. White, yeah, it was very very fun. And then Curry and Company, same colorway. Um, here they chose Meredith Herron's, uh fabric that she curated for um, Wesley Hall, and were actually J, JF Fabrics, mm -hmm. JF and um, yeah, just beautiful, contemporary on this very Baroque frame, again, that super olive um, colorway going even more towards gray than before, mm -hmm. but again, paired with brass and white. And, and Mitch of Gold hit it out of the park contemporary with this sort of olivey forest green with the brass and the Don't gold. Don't you love this one? Huh? And that super, the super shiny brass, too. That was another trend in metals, mm -hmm. just the super shine. But again, there's embossed leather pillows on there and the green velvet. I think if you're, if you're making green or blue velvet right now, you're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. Right. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> and then, and and Alexa Hampton, you know, the traditional piece, which I mean, again, with the the Waverly esque um, floral chintz, very Mario Wata, and and with the um, tiger, and, and she, this was her new line for Hickory. Yeah, this room was um, stunning. Just mm -hmm. absolutely the, the um, here you can see panels on the on back. It. I mean, it's just. Yeah. You know, typical uh, of her style, very eclectic mm -hmm. and, you know, based in contemporary, but then with a lot of fun, you know, things thrown in. Everyone loved this TiVo table, right, Deb? So I, I just love the whole concept if you're not familiar. So TiVo does furniture, and what they're doing now is they're actually uh, applying um, their wallpapers and grass cloths onto their chests and parson tables peeking out here and talk about mint green this chest was actually was in wallpaper this was a octagon table and you can see that they had cut the pieces and wedges and there and by the way they've there's it's got a resin top on it so it's very very functional and I think you could pick like I don't know 60 or uh, 16 or 20 different colors I love yeah, that it was such awesome. a great color range and oh, talk about good. custom. And really, it wasn't a custom price either. It was uh -uh. very well priced. Very well. And so you can, you know, really offer something unique to your client. And then Wesley Hall, you know, took the green really to, um, you know, sort of its palest limit with this chair. It actually looked more green in the showroom. Yeah. But just love the sheen of it and uh, the scale. And then more TiVo. I mean, you know, we can never get enough TiVo, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this puts together the blue and the greens. And then this one is a really sort of, um, it's gray, but it, ha it is a bluish gray. But the reason that we put it in here is that it really signifies sort of the um, full spectrum coming about of umbrella fabrics on residential interior right. pieces. And it's beautiful. It has a beautiful hand. It's feminine. I mean, this comes so far from, you know, your old-time umbrella awning stripe, right? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, mm -hmm. there's no reason why you can't use um, their fabrics now on interior products and have it. Uh, no one will know except yeah. for you when you spill that glass of red wine on it and it comes right off, right? They, they've just engineered the acrylic yarn so much that. Um, and Joe Ruggiero has right. been a mastermind. Absolutely. Um, so I'm bringing it forward. Second thing is texture, um, all over the place in all product categories, from accessories to furniture to lighting. And as you can see, nobody does it better than Curry and Company. These are all sea glass, absolutely gorgeous in person. Um, you know, all of these pieces, for me, what strikes me is the time and the effort go into putting these together. And each one of those is strung together. It's like a little sculpture that has to be done correctly because they're all different. Um, sizes, but just the man hours that go into putting these things together, they really are works of art, and the color is very subtle but striking. Yeah. And again, more, you know, more Ted. This, this, natural. When you saw, yeah, this very is very much beads, the natural right? palette. That, that one is little tiny wooden beads on a knit fabric, and it stretches. Yeah. And so it has this beautiful sort of wave to it, and the light. Um, just comes to it very softly at Miles Talbot, but just a really unique um, take on lighting with adding these natural finishes to it. And then Ambella Home had a lot of um, raw and blonde uh, wood colors, which we saw all over the place um, by, coming on very, very strong. And by the way, these are bath vanity. That's a bath vanity. Yeah. Um, and then this crazy. whole... You can see the faucet on the top. Right. This whole um, lighting, this whole like wood bead was sort of the sophisticated version of coastal living. Everybody was talking right. about coastal living. Um, doesn't work so well in the Midwest. We need more right. North woods <laughs> by the lake, but um, you know, it definitely was was a trend. Here, are these these wood slices. I think this was wood, wasn't it? It's Curry and Company, and they're little dowel cuts yeah. of um, twigs, basically, yeah. and they are laid into. Um, you know, this resin field, but what you need to look at is if you look at the bigger picture at the top and the bottom, they're not cut. So they're laying that in as one sheet with each little circle placed at the top and then they're filling that in by hand and then pouring in the resin. Yeah. I mean, Crazy. that's the detail that makes product by Curry Company and people like that um, artisanal and beautiful and it's a work of art. Um, this is another curry fixture with these sort of raw um, glass balls, which is mm -hmm. just gorgeous. It had such a nice sheen to it. And then it, from an accessory perspective, you had the, the, the beads here that you could buy at Coderas that was kind of mm -hmm. laying out. It, and they just had these like strings of beads laying out as a, as a vi part of a vignette for accessories. This is his the Curry's and Company sort of industrial um, take. And, yeah. Um, what was it? What was the name of the collection? They were calling it something. Oh, you know what? I don't remember, but it's part of that brutalist, you know, sort of industrialist uh, um, look that is coming on more. And this was their new installation, and it was really stunning in in person because it it really looked very sophisticated and dramatic. This picture doesn't really do it justice. And there's Cecil, of course, our buddy, who was so kind to us. Um, but the story, the backstory to these is also very interesting. So mm -hmm. what you're looking at is tin roofs and tin sheeting that had been collected um, from World War II buildings when the US, um, U.S. Army and uh, Navy came into the Pacific, into the Philippines and the islands. Um, in the War of the Pacific, they reclaimed all these pieces and um, upcycled them into these lamps and pendants. Which is, I yeah, thought was, I mean, that's a great story. Well, and we've been talking, you know, on, in other discussions about provenance and history and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, things, you want things to have a story. And this certainly spoke to oh, that. Sorry. And Bella Holm loved, loved, loved this um, upholstered headboard that encased both nightstands. I mean, there's so many times when you, especially out here in Vegas, we have these ginormous, you know, McMansions, and they built rooms that are just too big and you need to segment areas. But even in a playroom or a, a home office or whatever, I mean, this is just a fantastic piece that, um, you know, you could use for any sort of room divider. But I just loved it. It's kind of, for me, it was sort of a take on the 1960s sort of uh -huh. bedroom set. Uh -huh. 
uh -huh. but done in a modern way. And even the fabric speaks to sort of this natural texture. So you've got um, a woven um, raw silk on the back, and then the natural texture of the wood, the natural texture of that um, printed, which was velvet web, by the way. It was gorgeous. And then also notice the door, drawer fronts on these nightstands and how they're pieced together and they have mm -hmm. this sort of three-dimensional ornamentation because that was actual, that was definitely a trend that we're going to show you oh, some yeah. more shots out in, in a few minutes um, about that. Um, here's we have Bernhard and um, Ralph Lauren home. And this was a texture on um, a lot of wood pieces that we're seeing with a really deep grain. I don't know if they sandblasted it or what. It was very soft to the touch and very well finished. But the grain um, in a lot of the furniture we were seeing was really beefed up and highlighted as you know the mm -hmm. beauty of wood. And so that's kind of where this segment is going. Mm -hmm. um, these were worlds away. And again, um, you know, just kind of that take on we want to see the texture. We want to know what kind of material this is. Mm -hmm. Because when you're putting that up against the other stuff that we showed you, the high gloss acrylics and everything else, you need that texture to make it work. Right. And and it was it's also kind of speaking to what we're seeing ha going to happen is more exotic woods. Um, and yeah. you'll see some slides of that coming. Um, love the idea wood. the take of the stool with that big, huge yeah. door knocker. Loved it. And a lot of oversized hardware. Really awesome big hardware. But again, it's that raw wood look. And then Uttermost debuted this little chair, which I think is adorable. But again, I mean, I, I don't know what the price point on, is on this. It's super low. Um, but just a great little raw finished chair. But it's a more sophisticated take than the, mm -hmm. you know, deconstructed burlap look that we've been seeing. Or another Ottermost, see where they're taking that whole sort of bamboo. And, yeah, and for uh, the Ottermost price point and availability, I mean, this you uh, we upholster the seat with your COM fabric, and that looks like an extremely expensive chair, and it would fit into any of those scenarios. And this, this was our favorite piece, right? Like a white, yeah. it was like wiped. It was like you know, a, it was a, it, was. it wasn't striated. It was just, no. it was a wonderful, wasn't washed. I don't know. It was stained white somehow. It wasn't yeah. limed. It wasn't pickled. Uh -uh. Um, but you saw every bit of the wood grain, and it's hard to see in the tabletop picture. But it, you know, it came in at a diamond, and just the silhouette of that, the uh. shape was so lovely and beautiful. Um, just a gorgeous feminine, you know, desk, but still not too frilly. And this is what you were talking about, Deb, with the textured um, uh, cabinet fronts. Saw From a ton of. From iron to shell to tile to upholstered door fronts, um, the, these are both them from Ambella Home. And then here's this break front where they did the the diamond, the the cross hatching, but then they also did it in the mirror. And the mirrors were sort they were beveled, and so they had this sort of almost like bullseye feel to mm -hmm. them, angular. It was just it it, it this. Part of this whole sort of faceted, faceted, geometric, um, sculptural kind of feel to it. Here's two more, which are much more sort of mid-century, but we saw a lot of this sort of engineered, three-dimensional ornamentation, for lack of another word. Yeah, and I think you know it's a response to you know the overuse of trellis motifs. Oh, in the God. past few years, I think that this kind of texture is going to come on really strong and just build. Or this these one is John Richard. Oh, just absolutely gorgeous. And this is more like photorealistic um, manipulation of natural substances, so mm -hmm. stone or whatever, and then applied um, into a finish. Into that, here's a Carrera marble. Um, oh, it was just, just beautiful. absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Or and, and then that, oh, go ahead. Well, this, this is all the Burlwood. Yeah, this is the beginning of that whole sort of Biedemeyer, Burlwood, mm -hmm. Ebony Woods, uh, Bird's Eye Maple, um, you know, tortoise shell kind of looks that we're seeing coming on. Here's more Worlds Away. Yeah, I mean, when was the last time we were seeing burled wood and knots in wood? It's been quite a while, yeah. and it's it's everybody is using it. Yeah. And again, I think it, it's a good backdrop. This one was stunning oh, from John Richards. Stunning. It's floating, that floating console. Gorgeous with and those two little X uh, benches. Oh, yeah. 
And look at the two benches. Those are a mirrored cut. They're cut from the same piece of wood. Yep. You can see that. I mean, that's that's what he does so beautifully, you know, and the grain on that is so gorgeous. And then in sort of a juxtaposition to that, with that being, you know, the very shiny um, and uh, sort of, you know, minute detail, we have texture and in every shape and form of fur. Faux fur, real fur, 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 I'm tongue-tied, lamb's wool, alpaca. Um, this new set of rugs from Lola it was like a cloud. It's just absolutely beautiful faux fur rugs. Right. Mongolian and, lamb everywhere. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Here's that rug again um, on the floor in a different colorway. I mean, who wouldn't want to step out of the bed onto that thing? Mm -hmm. I'd wear that as a coat. <laughs> And again, still with the little, you know, tufts, but we're seeing some sense of humor in the base. So Ambella did this great acrylic one. You've got, you know, the Van Collier um, with the little hooves, the realistic hooves. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's they still, were cute. you know, I didn't think it would last. Did you, Deb? No, but we saw them everywhere. But we'll see if it's not, it, yeah, it's not going away. And then even in, in fabrics, this is one of my favorite fabrics. Notice the, the fringe embroidery and the met. This is from Anna French, and I think it's going to be available in June. It was a gorgeous fabric, gorgeous. And again, even on fabric, it's about the texture, right? Uh -huh. It's three-dimensional, you, know, a, a, you know, adding that extra bit of texture to whatever it is that you're doing. Right, or even decorative pillows. These on the left oh, yeah. are from Global Views, and it was all cut. Studio A. Taking yeah. an artisan technique from quilting, and then you had the whole sort of, you know, um, paper. This was woven. like a paper that was woven. or And then even on top of bed, so you've got the glam, but then you're mixing it with this heavy corded kind of, or we were seeing knitted pieces. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so there was, it was all about building texture versus color blocking and pattern um, in the pillowing on the beds. And crazy chair. Oh, isn't that awesome? It's like a living being. I expect like a transformer head to come out of the back and it's like a bear gets up, you know? And there was one that and was similar have, at Bernhardt. I was just going to say that I did not get a picture of that. They were gorgeous and mm -hmm. similar um, fake fur on the chair. Yeah. And then and Martha would be proud. Faux bois. <laughs> we, 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 did, we did predict this in one of our earlier <laughs> webinars that we did this summer. Um, mm -hmm. But there was, it, you know, that, that whole sort of nature thing and this it coming back in resins, coming back in wood, cement. This is Curry right. and Company. And it seems like Curry has, you know, their faux bois in the past was relatively structured to look like a table or a chair. It seems like they're embracing a more organic form. This is their new table for market. And it, it looks more like a natural growing um, you know, piece of wood that a tabletop has been applied to. Mm -hmm. And then it's going glam in a big way, right, Deb? Mm -hmm. I mean, this chair in Bernhardt was so beautiful. Um, and then, again, it's sort of that feminine, masculine mix, but taking it to a new level of sophistication, I think. This right. Michael Aram table, um, we fell in love with his product. It was absolutely stunning. He, he was a hit of market. He was yeah. the first time he'd shown in, at uh, High Point and um, kind of moving into home decor. He's done tabletop before and sculpture and a lot of other things. And, and he was definitely a hit of market. Um, we'll show you some other pictures later. Global mm -hmm. Views were, do, were doing their whole like little branch kind of piece thing scenario. Right. But very natural. I yeah. mean, there's, there's sort of the... Very glamorized and then the very natural, which is a nice mix, I think. So it's same with the Curry and Company uh, set bench. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then some more Curry and Company. I love this hat rack. I want it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Bella Home did their version. Um, mm -hmm. Theodore Alexander did a you know a Louis um, chair, but in faux bois. In a the Umbella Home Table, you can see the influence of the designer who's coming from Global Views, can't you? Yep. Uh -huh. It has a Global View-esque uh, feel to it. Absolutely. I wonder how that will play out. And then on the right is Cocoon Pendant, and this is, again, from Michael Aram, 
and it was stainless steel that was wrapped up in a cocoon and then the branches with the butterflies on it um, it was in the corner of his booth and it was stunning huge. it was huge and stunning I think there were and like a used, dozen together used, yeah and he used electric mesh cable covers to hang it with because he wanted it to look organic um, yeah. Very, very interesting. And then this is an indoor-outdoor table, very, um, you know, traditional Queen Anne silhouette. But as you can see, it actually has planters in it. So it's kind I of taking this time. whole faux bois, nature made, to this whole sort of terra firma kind of, it's um, becoming, it, it's moving in sort of into this direction, I think, where it's really both literally and then inspirationally. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, oh, okay. well, yeah, well, I was just say. Uh, well, what I, what I wanted to say with this is that Fomental um, has been showing with CR Lane, or no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Korean company, um, and we've fallen in love with their stuff. But most of us will never see it in our lifetime. <laughs> um, yeah, we, you know, we love it, and it's it's a hard sell to clients because it is an expensive product. But they, uh, we sort of got blown away at market with this other product that we saw. Right. So, and, and I will have to say that if there was one surface that really, you know, stood out, whether it's the floor, you know, sometimes it's the flooring, sometimes it's the windows, you know, sometimes it's, you know, the, the, this market, it was all about wall art and what, what you can do on your walls. It was Absolutely. And big, big scale. Go, go big or go home. But this French market furniture had an amazing paper product that was uh, very well priced, came as one piece, I believe it was eight feet tall by six by eighteen feet long. Eighteen feet long, huge piece. I purchased crinkled this. <laughs> fabric. And you don't even need to apply it with paste. You can put it up temporarily. It's amazing. Um, it was an amazing, amazing product for a fraction of the price. This is a by the same uh, manufacturer uh, sold through Invella Home, and it is one piece. What they did was they hung it with these little nail heads, uh -huh. just straight into all this, tacked it right on the wall. Yeah. It's like disposable wall covering. <laughs> That's awesome. Just amazing. And I have seen this for the last few years at another um, company called Creative Co-op. It's a gift manufacturer. They used to show it High Point, but don't anymore. This is more of the French market paper, but doesn't that look like a Gracie paper? Mm -hmm. And, the and it is priced Trust very me. reasonably. It's really reasonably priced. Yeah, and uh, the one on uh, the right is from Embella Home, this grayish, um, you know, beautiful landscape. And the one on the left is from Creative Co-op. And uh, the pricing is amazing from Creative Co-op. If this appeals to you, I would suggest that you definitely um, get online and see what they've got. And these are both from Creative Co-op as well. It's just a great product, and the scale is huge. And then in Natural Curiosities did these wall pieces. These were actually textiles, and they manipulated the scale and blew them up, and then were doing them as wall pieces, as art, you know, framing them as art. I love, the, I love those. Yeah. And we out. saw a lot of very popular textile patterns being blown up as art. A lot uh -huh. of the chinoiserie patterns that have been around on the market for a while now, Yep. Um, they're using them as art pieces. And then pattern um, goes without saying. Um, we saw a lot of chino chinoiserie in the last couple of markets. Um, you know, here you've got the dragon, you know, based off the whole I Ching uh, Schumacher dragon pattern that it was everywhere last market. But it's really moving more into florals um, and classic um, takes on um, pattern and freshening it up not only in color but in scale and stuff. I, I didn't see as much in Wazerie, um as no. I, I, you know, as we did at Latin's Market. And the it's floral range is more organic based patterns. And, right. Yeah. But it's still there. I mean, right. it's, it's it, but still not, didn't. That is, it wasn't in your face like it was last market. And, and no. florals are from, you know, very realistic to, you know, something that's here a little bit more, um, you know, 
stylized. temporary and stylized to blurred looks to watercolor looks. It was all over the the um, the maps, both in scale and in pattern repeat. And it wasn't only just in fabrics. Um, actually, one of the members of our tour turned us on to this. This is was at Social Marin. These are vi these are vinyl floor cloths, and um, they've only they. These are four or five of their patterns. They were absolutely amazing. They're durable. They're, um, you know, where she was using them, she was buying them for clients for that had uh, wood floors in their kitchens and didn't really want a rug, right? So this is like wipe clean, hose it off if you want, because it's oh, yeah. like, like linoleum that has been done in these amazing patterns. And it does have a linoleum-like touch to it. Yep. yep. And... For people like me who have little dogs that pee on anything that's made out of fiber, I mean, this is a godsend. I've never been able to have rugs. You know, I could put these anywhere. Yeah. And you just wipe them clean. So this is a great yeah. new source for you. And the price point, yeah. from what I understand, is really good. Um, here is, um, this is from Merce Studio. These are actually 12-inch tiles that have been painted. Um, they were in Salon, and they were another hit of market. Um, they're hardwood, and then they've been sealed with a poly resin. Uh, so you get this sort of Escher GM, you know, dimension to these tiles, or you can do bright, colorful. You can do this whole sort of you know, folk arty linoleum looks to it, the vintage look. Um, there were some great t um, looks in this tile. And this is digital printing right on a wood tile, yeah. which, you know, we've been, Deb and I have been sort of preaching to uh, the masses about digital printing capabilities and customization. And this, this uh, company, I believe they will do custom for you, won't they? I believe so, yes. I think so. So think of the possibilities. Now you can apply this to floors, and you can use this as wall paneling or inserts in cabinetry or, um, you know, all of these different applications that we have for and, this type of product. And here's the other thing that's great about it. It's wood, okay, and it's a tile. So if you have an issue and you, you know, gouge it or something happens to it, you just replace, you pop it out and you, you know, reapply, put in another tile. You're not having to, you know, rework a floor. Right. Like on, on, a, on a typical wood floor. It's a, it's a click-in system. Mm -hmm. And then there's, uh, we're talking about pattern again, lots, kind of like all over the place. This is cotton and quill, always a, a hit at market. It had some interesting looks that were um, happening out there. Um, and it was not only in indoor fabrics, but in outdoor fabrics. This is Tebow and their new outdoor line in Sombrella. Again, speaking to what Jackie just said, where, you know, you've, you've typically have your outdoor, you know, pattern looks, but then, you know, you've got this sort of willow tree, almost Sanderson-esque, uh, but it's umbrella fabric, and the draperies right. are umbrella fabrics. So and, and again, you can't tell, right? Yeah. And, you know, when you're selling to your clients and have kids or pets or whatever, I mean, it's such a bonus when you can give them that option. Yeah. Um, this was Thief River Linen and their new bedding collection kind of speaking to the whole texture, you know, malachite. Um, this was a DeLeo textile uh, that was at Showtime that was a popular seller. Kind of, you know, some of the things that we've been talking about all kind of put together into one, um, right. one uh, ensemble. And then there's the, um, what I was calling, and Jackie are calling the turf terrifically transparent. <laughs> we can't say it. But I know, we can't. But trust me, everybody <laughs> had some sort of yeah. plexi, acrylic, or lucite componentry to their line. Whether it was upholstery, whether it was gift, whatever it was, it was, I mean, that's, we saw yeah. a lot of lucite. Toby Fairley had a lot of, of plexiglass feet. Yep. Um, there they yep. are, right there, yep. and Bella Home, and Bella and Home. Sausage, Ottoman, um, you know, but some, some people too had some really interesting shakes going on. Them. Right, right, so this is Phillips Collection, and they're kind of known for their like, you know, live edge, lava rock, uh, kind of unusual stuff. So natural. Right, what they did is, um, so here you've got this, you know, slab, this live edge, and then they were putting lucite, la lucite 
legs on it. Mm. Plus, I have to tell you, I love their marketing campaign for this because the headline um, in their marketing campaign was, it's all about the base, about the base. <laughs> I loved it. It was like, I love that table. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. Right. Or and then it was kind of all where it's also kind of going is into this whole idea of encapsulation and and um you know science kind of enters into it. One of my most favorite showrooms is Luna Bella and this was one of their lamps, so it's mercury glass and then this sort of bell coche over this, you know, Edison light kind of you know, Nobody scientist does it thing. They do. Yeah, uh, it was, and it was done in this with this, you know, Regency bed frame, and it, it was just, it was a great look, and it was really their tall. Their new trend, um, their new trend, this market, and Deb knows because she took one home, was <laughs> miniature collections, and they put them on little stands, like a little base with little stands, and then depending on what it was, whether it was a perfume bottle, or in Deb's case, was a, a vintage mirrored drapery finials or, you know, cigarette lighters, and they built like a mini collection in a box for you. Oh, God, it was so Put sweet. it on your table, and it's there. And it doesn't get all disheveled. You don't have to move it around and dust it because it's one unit. It was right. be just absolutely brilliant. We loved them. And, and this, these are from Global Views, and, um, you know, so it's like a gel um, vase with this platform on it. But by the way, these were, silk, these were silk flowers, and you bought this with the flowers. It wasn't just, they weren't selling just the vase, which was kind of interesting. Uh, okay, I thought those were real. Uh-uh, they weren't. <laughs> they were silk. I think, aren't they Seriously? awesome? Yeah. It was a I gel. I thought they were real. No. Okay. Well, and, they got, you know, right? I thought they were selling the vase at first, and then they're like, "No, it comes thought. together." I'm like, "Okay." Oh my um, gosh, you got them. The whole feather thing kind of take wings. This is Jonathan Charles in this wonderful chair. We saw it in pillows and accessories. You saw it in wall art. This is National Curioc um, Curiosities, but this whole like feather wings, birds. Put a but bird I, on I like it. I like that it was more organic, though. It's not an angel wing, which we saw a ton of, you know, <laughs> um, in days past. But it's a, it's a real organic living thing, which goes along with the other natural surfaces that we've been showing. Yeah, I kind of said Da Vinci, Icarus, right. Greek mythology exactly. to me, you know. Yeah. Upholstering with rugs was a big trend that we're seeing now. A lot of rugs either used on the reverse, so they look very muted. Rugs that were bleached, rugs that were over dyed, and then used to upholster benches. And what a great thing to put outside, um, you know, again, in a playroom or something super durable. Um, it's already kind of, you know, half messed up anyway, so you spill something on it, it looks like it's part of it. You're sort of building the character of it. But uh, I think a nice way to have rugs where you may not want a powdered rug on the floor, it may be too much, but you get that sense of history and um, the beautiful mm -hmm. sort of artisanal quality of the rug in a, in a small dose. Yep, absolutely. Or here you, you know, and you could find, we found it at all price points. Absolutely. You know, this one is a storage Oops. cube at the top in Surya and just, you know, great in a really contemporary room setting, but, you know, bringing some provenance and some history and some, um, you know, a tribal beat to it, really. Right. Absolutely. So we, we thank you guys all for, you know, hanging in there with us and seeing what we saw that was trending at market. And um, if you'd like to join us in October and spot the trends with us, um, we're going to be doing our second VIP market experience. October 16th to the 21st. There we are on our little rascals. <laughs> By the way, we don't. We didn't use rascals. We wish we had, though. <laughs> we may next market, though. Depending on how our feet hold out, we may have to uh, start a rascal train. Too. So if you've always wanted to go to bar market and um, didn't really know how to navigate it or you been to market and had a really bad experience and said, I'll never go back, contact us, get on our list. Uh, more details will be forthcoming in the next couple of weeks. So anybody have any questions before we let you go? Um, over the weekend, we'll be posting um, this to our YouTube channel, and we'll let you guys all know when, when it's up so you can review it and, and go back to it for some of those sources at your convenience. 
So, oh, hi, Marietta. Glad you're on today. So she wants to know, first of all, who's the source for the vinyl floor cloths? It is, a, they're called Vintage Vinyl. That's the um, name of them. And they're from Spitcher and Company, S-P-I-C-H-E-R. And they were at Socher Marin. Um, they might be repped by another, you know, design center uh, rep line in your area. Any other questions? Uh, she, so she said, oh, she also wants to know, what kind of camera do you use for our pictures? Well, we've used an iPad, we've used iPhones, some of them are um, press shots that we, you know, get from our press, from the press center, so we've, um, I don't think we actually took any actual, hand. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we took any actual, actual used any actual cameras No, this I didn't time. bring my camera this time. Yeah. I, I found that my iPhone um, takes the better pictures than my actual camera, but I'm thinking of changing, though, to a Galaxy because my friends that have Galaxies that do a lot of social media posting, their pictures are awesome. Well, the I think they're better bigger. than my iPhone. That's my issue. I need a bigger phone. <laughs> I, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm always digging it out <laughs> of the phone. Don't make them that <laughs> Okay, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Well, happy Cinco de Mayo. Go have a margarita and uh, <laughs> enjoy your weekend. That's what Gab and I are going to do. Yep. Bye-bye, Jackie. Bye. -bye,